Oh no, I just dropped my gimbal on the floor and it came so close to smashing that tank. Two of those fish are going for a special little project that I want to do. Oh, by the way, Matt's an expert on absolutely everything in here. <laughs> and the other fish that I want to be getting is the... Everyone is fine with wrong pronunciations on my channel. I've been doing it since day one. Well, welcome back to the channel, guys. So many of you have actually asked me in the comments section and in DMs on Instagram as well. I'll go check out my Instagram if you haven't already. Many people ask me how I manage with all these tanks. Well, the truth is I kind of just let them do their own thing. <laughs> what I mean by that is I set them up in a way that creates little ecosystems that you don't really have to do a huge amount to. So most tanks get a water change every three weeks, something like that. So that's, that's quite simple to do. I've got a little system now where I can just quickly take water out, put water back in, all joined in at the tap the water goes down the waste pipe on the tap so like it's just easy it's all simple in terms of maintaining the tanks with plants we, you guys know I'm quite terrible at trimming plants back I mean it's because I hate that sort of carved up look well I thought I did recently I did it in the uh, Asian aquarium and it looked great but for most tanks that aren't as densely populated with plants as that it can sometimes look a bit weird so I just let it go wild let it look good I mean for me that is a natural look and it does make most of the tanks look pretty good So this is just a power head with a pipe going into it. I've put a ball valve on so I can stop a siphon if I need to. That's draining quite rapidly now. But basically, it comes all the way around here into this room, my second studio, and then underneath here and into that little waste pipe underneath there. So that's absolutely perfect. Going straight down the drain and we don't have to worry about the water at all. And as you can see, it's pushing down the water pretty fast. We've already done a quarter of the tank in like, I've literally switched it on about a minute ago. So this is perfect. I wasn't using this before. I was using a hook over the edge with a little siphon going, but it's taken so much time on, you know, all the big tanks that I had to come up with a different system. So this is working really well. Do water changes so fast. Look, we're nearly there. I've only want to do half, by the way. Loads of tannins in this wall, which is good, but it needs a water change. It's been like a week now. So yeah, this isn't what you'd call a proper maintenance session. It's just a quick flushing out of the water, putting it back in again. If you're doing a, a proper you know, maintenance session, you want to bring the water down a little bit slower, use the pipe to suck up any detritus and you can get right in there and waft it all about and stuff. But to be fair, if I come down close here, it's actually pulling in a load of the waste as well. See, so I'll put just a little, little bit of sponge at the bottom there to make sure no fish gets sucked up into the power head because uh, this is actually designed as an internal filter, but it works really well for the purposes we need it for. But if I don't know if the camera's picking up, but there's loads of waste just getting pulled straight into there, even though it's right in front of that power head, it's still working so well. And these guys absolutely think it's feeding time now. <laughs> That's my fault. <laughs> so moving on and to the purpose of this video, I now want to tell you about a project I've got coming. Well, first of all, I don't want to tell you about the project until later on because you'll know exactly what's going on straight away. And I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> In the last vlog, I was at Made Ahead Aquatics and we picked out some fish. We picked up the green Respora, but whilst I was there, I actually got three different other kinds of fish. One of them's for an escape of its own, but two of those fish are going for a special little project that I want to do. I mean, I say special, I think it's special. It's a a little bit different to anything else I've got going on at the moment similar to something I did before but on a smaller scale and it'd be a cool sort of top-down view tank that you can then submerge yourself uh, I don't know what that means it's gonna be really cool anyway let's go get the fish okay so one of the reasons I've come to the store today is because I want to pick up two kinds of fish I want to get pandagara that I know all of you love because you've told me a million times that I need to get some and also I've seen some really cool rice fish as well that I want to get Okay, so Matt is here with me again. <laughs> these are the pandagara down here, which look absolutely insane. So for these fish, you do really want sort of high flow to best replicate their environment, but that doesn't mean they have to have it. Is that right, Matt? Yeah, so these guys have been raised in captivity, so they are less susceptible and less problematic when needing high flow. So you can raise them or quarantine them in a lower flow environment. Awesome, that's wicked. Oh, by the way, Matt's an expert on absolutely everything in here. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to be my go-to guy always now for fish. Do you mind me messaging you at any time? No, that's absolutely fine. 1am or whatever. <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> Remember, I start editing at 4am, so, you know, <laughs> I might need you. But yeah, these are cool. They're so nice. They look like little bumblebees. <laughs> but there are gobies that are bumblebee gobies, aren't there? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, these yeah. are not them, obviously. 
little bit more orange. Bit more orange, okay. Well, that might be something for the future as well. So they're from like sort of fast flowing streams, I guess, or rivers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fast flowing so, streams and rivers. So what I want to do is build an environment for them that replicates that. Not to start with, I just want to get them back, get them on in the storage tanks. And then after that, we're going to do it. It's going to be so cool. Super fast flowing, narrow tank. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. You're looking at a fish, this sort of size. Sorry, yeah, guys, I was just asking Matt then. So we've got an 80 centimetre tank. It's the shallow tank that I've got. I want to do a really fast flowing sort of river for them. I just said, what is the sort of best number that we should put of these fish? Because obviously they are small. Yeah, groups of six or eight, I think would be nice in that tank if we're just going for them. They get to a decent size. They're getting to around nine centimetres. So. Oh, okay, so they're only babies at the moment. Yeah, only tiny Well, not moment. babies, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Okay, all right, if we go for eight, I think that's going to be a good number. I mean, what's, what is a good fish to stop with them? Um, any of your faster flowing danios, so any of your fish that are going to be from those streams that are faster. Um, so yeah, danios are probably going to be my favourite choice. Hill streams? Hill stream loaches would ah, be a nice choice yes, as well. Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah. Everyone loves a little mini stingray, don't they? So. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll definitely get them. And the other fish that I want to be getting is the rice fish. Now, they're over in another section, so they've got different sections to the shop. You've got tropical, you've got cold water. I mean, rice fish, they don't need warm water like, uh, say, guppy does. They can live in, like, lower temperatures as well. And, yeah, this is the cold water section. So we've got all the danios and everything. We've got goldfish, really nice goldfish down here. Oh, I like these red caps, especially that one. Look at the tail. But here are the rice fish. So these are Daisy's blue rice fish. So you can get different sort of color variations and different types, but they're all quite similar. But I have never had these before. Oh, they've got such nice colors on them. I hope they're showing up. So Matt's just said to me, he's just getting the daisies rice fish by the way. He's just said to me, I suppose you might want to go for males and females. I definitely do, but Matt, what's the difference uh, visually between males and females? Obviously we know the anatomy, well, not, yeah. not really of a fish, I don't know. <laughs> With these guys, they're, um, females are much more plump and a little bit less colorful. Males are a lot more slender um, and a lot more colorful. So you'll find that the males are generally showing this really bright blue coloration at the moment. Feel most females will be a little bit silvery this one actually down here has actually got eggs. So that's a definite female. Oh, we want that one. <laughs> Give me the eggs. <laughs> oh, that'd be cool, yeah. Can we get that, honestly, can we get that one yeah, with the eggs? Yeah, we do. That'd be wicked. I mean, so with the eggs, they drop them, is that right? They scatter them? Or yeah, they... they hold on to them, and then they normally, as far as I remember, scatter them into plants. So yeah, that the babies Java moss, that sort of thing. Java moss and things are perfect for them, really. Okay, that'd be awesome. So then when they do that, I want to put them in the tank of their own. Yeah, so if you move the babies into a tank of their own so you can grow them up, the parents probably aren't the most parental and uh, will predate on any babies, I expect. Okay. You'll get a few surviving just through natural, you know, hiding. But yeah, if you want more to survive, then generally separating them off is the best way. Awesome. How cool is Matt's face mask, by the way, everyone? <laughs> <laughs> it's looking good. <laughs> So Matt, is the the name Daisy's rice fish? I've had rice fish before, but they were sort of like a yellow version. Um, is the name Daisy's relating to the the colour, or does that mean something else? So I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be a hundred percent on this, but I'm pretty sure the lady that actually discovered them was possibly called Daisy, and then her second name was Wow Right. I'm pretty sure, but don't pr don't keep me on the pronunciation of that name because yeah, W O W O R A E is. <laughs> Everyone's uh, guess. Everyone is fine with wrong pronunciations on my channel. <laughs> I've been doing it since day one. <laughs> yeah. the easiest way. Okay, cool. All right. So down the bottom of this tank, we've got loads of hillstream loaches. So remember we were just saying that they go really nicely with the Pandagara. I think I'm definitely going to go for five. I'm going to get five of them. Five's a good number. And uh, just be a little bit more interested in the tank as well. More cool stuff to look at. These goldfish are going nuts. <laughs> Thank you. 
safety first. So, so I am back from the fish shop. I've got the fit. No, I haven't. Where are they? There they are. I don't know why I'm showing you. I'm, I'm sure you believe me. <laughs> anyway, I've got loads of tanks dotted around at the moment that are empty. Plenty of spaces to put all these fish in. So uh, we've got the Hillstream loaches, we've got the Pandagara, and we've got the Daisy's rice fish. Now, I've kept Hillstream loaches before, but they didn't really look quite like these ones. Maybe it's because these are juveniles. Maybe it's because they're in different warp parameters. Maybe it's because the lighting was different. I don't know, but we'll get them out and have a look in shortly. Now, I've never kept Pandagara before, and I've never kept Daisy's rice fish. I had a different kind of rice, rice fish. It was like a yellowy sort of one. These are like a really cool pearlescent blue. So I'm really looking forward to doing a skate for those guys. But the Pandagara and the Hillstream loach, I want to do a really, really cool, shallow, fast flowing stream for these. You guys may have seen my Rainbow River I did before, which was like a circular sort of motion of water that went around a tank with a central island. I want to do that, but on a smaller scale. So it'll look really cool looking in from above. You can see that fast flow. And then we can dip under the waterline and just see the hillstream loaches sucking onto the rocks and with the pandagaras in that fast flow. Oh, it should look so cool. Have some val in it that's just like going along with the flow. I'm really looking forward to creating something like that. But first of all, we need to get those fish into their new tanks. How many times have I said that? So many times, and I always say it like that as well. Get these new fish into their tanks. There's a t-shirt. Speaking of t-shirts, guys, this is the new merch. It's a random fish on a hoodie. Uh, I mean, if you like that, then there's a link above. You can go buy one. Loads of you have bought them already, guys, so thanks a lot for that. <laughs> it's really cool to know that you like my design. Uh, I designed it myself, uh, and, and that you want to have them, so thanks, yeah. Go, go take a look if, you, if you're interested. But anyway, enough of all that. Let's just get these fish to their tanks. So it's now been 24 hours since we put the fish in. Let's take a look and see how they're getting on. <laughs> look at that, straight away up on the front glass there, we've got one of those mini stingrays, also known as Hillstream loaches. The Pandagara are absolutely stunning fish. They're larger than I thought. I mean, they get bigger than this. So I've got eight in here, which might sound like a bit too much for the tank they're going in, but oh yeah, have I even shown you the tank? Hang on. Yeah, so this is going to be the tank they're going in, guys. What I'm going to do is obviously remove everything out, and then I need to have really fast circular flow, and for that we can just use like a power head or something. It's got a good filter in there for the size of it, and I want to do like an island in the middle, so like the whole tank's divided into two. I want one side to be like, you know, a deeper section, which will be the foreground, and then the back section will be sort of raised, so it's like cobbly and the water going over it. oh it should look really really cool that is if it works out how i got it in mind which i think it will there's no reason why it shouldn't i mean this tank is finished now for me i'm not really enjoying it anymore and it's uh yeah it's not really doing like... what are these all the enders are staying perfectly still guys hello hello why are you so still oh yeah of course they're all staying quite still lights have only just come on it's very early i know they're okay look, look at this one this is my favorite this is the snake skin which I just want him to make sure that I get lots more out of them as well because he is a really, really cool colour. I actually bred him and brought him up from a baby, so he's one of my own, which is actually something really quite nice that I'd be proud of. So yeah, what I'm really liking about the Pandagara is they're just so, so active. The Hillstream loaches, well, they always sort of find a place they like and sort of latch on, which visually, when it's the front of the glass, doesn't look that, that like exciting. But when they're gonna be on some cobbles with fast flowing water sort of hopping from place to place, that's when they'll really come into their own. But yeah, the Pandagara are really, really active, even though there's, there is flow in here, that um, little filter at the back there look, you can see it's creating a little bit of flow but there's not really a lot so we're not really seeing the best of the fish you can keep them in an environment like this but you know if you really want to see the best behavior and get the most out of your fish then you should try and replicate as best as you can in most cases that is um, the, the environment that they're from especially fish like this guppies and things like that you can sort of get away with doing whatever you want and they'll be happy either way fish from fast flowing waters like fast flowing water and you're not going to get the best out of them unless you provide that so that's what we're going to do now i'm not saying for a second that that's what you have to do but that's just something that i would like to do so don't think i'm ever telling you how you should do your fish tanks it's always just how i do stuff and a suggestion but now what about the daisy's rice fish well let's take a look and as you can see they're not there <laughs> Okay, what's going on? Well, oh, there we go, there's one. 
There's one of them. Why is he on his own? Where's the rest of them? Guys, are you all there? I mean, I can't see you. Oh, it's so pretty though. I think that apparently is the female. So the females are the brightly colored ones and the males are a bit more dull, which isn't usually the case in the fish world, but that's, that's cool. Um, they're much larger. Where's the rest of them? Ah, uh, there we go. We've got a few hiding in this back section around there. And just a second ago off camera as well, I saw them up inside. So the thing is this tank, it looks like this uh, trident fern is solid, but it's not. Inside there it's all hollow because they just grow on the outside bits of the wood, but inside it's completely open. So they've obviously found a little nest in there. That's fine. I mean, they've only been in there for like a day. So they're given time to settle in. They'll start coming out a lot more. It's quite a packed tank this, because obviously when I built it, this fern was tiny <laughs> and it's just grown nuts. Probably have to move it out. At some point I wanna make my own skate with just that piece in the middle, so like a, a nature aquarium style or something. And then I can replace it with something new and start the process over again. Oh, hello, there's a fishy. <laughs> He's hiding away. But like I say, they'll come out again in their own time. So we'll get more footage of them as we go into different vlogs, especially when we do our own tank for them. I wanna do something really cool, a little bit controversial, but uh, I think it will look really good. But I'll tell you what, this tank looks so good next to the new no filter tank that we've made here. So this is the Chili Respora tank. Look at the colors. The colors are doing so well. I took out some of the floating plants because I had these red root floaters in, as you can see there. Well, I had quite a lot in there and it was blocking quite a lot of light. So I took them out because I personally think that we've got more than enough plants here to keep the water quality good and that's proven to be the case because there's no film built up at all on the surface it all looks brilliant oh no i just dropped my gimbal on the floor and it came so close to smashing that tank <laughs> yeah as i was saying there's plenty of plants in here to keep the water quality good that's what's actually taking away the waste from the fish guys so if you're wondering how you get away with no filters it's because the plants, you know, they, they use the fish waste to grow effectively or clean or something like that, some sort of science. <laughs> and a lot of people always ask me as well, what about oxygen and all that? But the plants produce the oxygen, that's what they do. They, they convert the CO2 gases in the water, background levels into oxygen, so we're all good with that. But I love this little scape. Look at those little rocks in the middle there. Look, you just sit here and you wouldn't think that it's just some tiny little tank. And then you pan out and it looks so good in the middle of those two, didn't it? Oh, I love it. But that is the end of the vlog, guys. So if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. I will see you on the next one.